This is Mr. Masonette, and with this tutorial, we are going to practice setting up and solving three different linear word problems. This problem reads that Garrett went to the store to buy some fruit. He paid $3.99 for a watermelon. He also purchased three pounds of cherries. If Garrett paid a total of $9.93 for the cherries and the watermelon, how much did the cherries cost per pound? Set up an equation and solve. Let C equal cost per pound. Now, it is given in the problem that Garrett paid $3.99 for a watermelon. And we know that we're going to add that to the cost of the cherries to get a total amount of $9.93. Now, just by looking at what we have set up so far, we can see that we're taking the price of the watermelon and adding it to the price of the cherries to get a total of $9.93. So what we could do is take the total and subtract it with the price of the watermelon and what would remain is the cost of the cherries. But that would be the total cost of the cherries, not the price per pound. We would have to take that cost and divide it by a total of three pounds to find the price per pound. But we have to set up an equation and solve so we can show this process algebraically. Now, it is given that Garrett purchased three pounds of cherries, but we do not know the cost per pound. But if we did, we know we would simply multiply that cost per pound by three. And we're letting the variable C represent the cost per pound. So what we're going to do is set up an expression that equals the total cost of the cherries, which can be found by multiplying three by the variable C. So if we knew what C was equal to, we would multiply that by 3, and that would give us the total cost of the cherries, and we would add that to the cost of the watermelon. Now we have an equation that we can solve by isolating for the C variable and seeing what it is equal to. So the first step is to take this $3.99 and subtract it from itself so we have 0 on this side, and then we do the same thing on the other side of our equation. And basically by doing this, this is going to give us how much the cherries cost. So we're going to bring this decimal straight down here. 13 take away 9 is equal to 4. And 18 take away 9 is 9. And 8 take away 3 is 5. So let's bring down our equal sign. Let's bring down the 3 times C. So on this side of our equation, we actually have the price of the cherries. But we have to divide this by 3 to figure out how much the cherries are going to cost per pound. So to show this algebraically, we have to go to the left-hand side of our equation and isolate the C variable by doing the opposite of multiplying it by 3, which is to divide by 3. And dividing anything by itself will always give you 1, which is our goal. We really just want to get 1c so we can see what it is equal to. And we balance our equation by dividing the other side by 3 as well. So we have to take $5.94 and divide that by 3. All right. So let's take this decimal and move it straight up. And then we divide 3 into 5, which goes in once. And 5 minus 3 is 2. We bring down this 9. 3 goes into 29 9 times, which is a total of 27. And we bring down this last digit, which is a 4. And, of course, 3 goes into 24 exactly 8 times. So we have determined that Garrett paid $1.98 for each pound of the cherries. And that is one example of how you can set up and solve a linear word problem. All right, let's try another example. In this problem, it says that the sum of 3 times a number and 2 less than 4 times that same number is 61. Write an equation and solve to determine the value of the unknown number. So right away it says that we have to find the sum of something. 
And the things that we're going to add are three times a number and two less than four times that same number. And that sum is going to be equal to 61. So we know we are adding two things together. And after we add those two things together, that is going to equal 61. And the first thing that we're adding is 3 times a number, which can be written as 3n. And the next thing that we are adding is 2 less than 4 times that same number. And the second thing that we are going to add is 2 less than 4 times that same number. And that would be written as 4n minus 2. Now, notice that I wrote minus 2 after 4 times a number, even though it said 2 less first. Because 2 less means that you have to take it away from something, so you have to write whatever that thing is first. Because it is 2 less than 4 times a number, that means 4 multiplied by n minus 2. A lot of people see 2 less, and they automatically want to write 2 in minus, but that would be incorrect. you got to ask yourself, 2 less than what? It's 2 less than 4 times a number. So now we have an equation that we can simplify and solve. So we're going to start by combining the terms 3n and 4n, which is equal to 7n. Now we bring down our minus 2 equals 61. Now our goal is to isolate this variable of n, so at the end we can say that n is equal to whatever value it is equal to. And when you are taking the numbers on one side of an equation and doing the opposite and sending them to the other side, what you do is follow the order of operations in reverse. Now normally you add and subtract last and you multiply and divide first with the order of operations, but when you're solving equations, you're essentially working backwards. So what you do is you take care of any addition or subtraction first. And because we have a minus 2 here, we're going to do the opposite of that, which is to add 2. And what you do to one side, we always do to the other side. So on the right-hand side, that leaves us with 63. And on the left-hand side, because these opposite integers cancel out to be 0, we are left with just 7 times n. Now, the opposite of multiplying by 7 is to divide by 7. And we do the same thing on the other side as well. Now, on the left-hand side here, we have 7 divided by 7, which leaves us with one whole. So we have one whole n here. And remember, when 1 is your coefficient, you really don't have to write a 1 in front of it. But understand that when we cancel these 7s out here, that does not mean 0. We actually have a 1 here. And on the other side, we have 63 divided by 7, which is equal to 9, which is the value of our unknown number. Now, just to verify that n is in fact the answer, we can plug it in to this equation up here to see if it does make 61. So if we did 3 times n, or 3 times 9, that would give us 27. If we plug 9 into this n, 4 times 9 would equal 36. And if we add those two values together, that would give us 63. And if we subtract 2 from 63, that would give us 61. So the value of 9 does work when we plug it into our equation. All right, let's try another example. This problem reads, Jana has an older sister and a younger sister. Her older sister is one year more than twice Jana's age. Jana's younger sister is three years younger than she is. The sum of their three ages is 26. Find Jana's age. So after reading this problem, on a basic level, we know that we have three sisters, that if we were to add their ages together, it would be equal to a total of 26 years. So the sisters can't be that old if between the three, you know, their ages only add up to 26. Well, it is given at the beginning of the problem that her older sister is one year more than twice Jana's age. And then it goes on to say that her younger sister is three years younger than she is. So basically what they are doing is comparing her older and her younger sister to Jana's age. 
So let's start by creating a variable to represent Jana's age. Let's just call that A. So now what we're going to do is write expressions in reference to Jana's age, starting with her older sister. Now her older sister is one year more than twice Jana's age. So algebraically, we can say that the older sister is double Jana's age, which is 2A, and one year more than that. So this expression right here is equal to the age of Jana's older sister. Now Jana's younger sister is three years younger than she is. So that just means that the younger sister is the same age as Jana, which is A, minus 3, because she is 3 years younger. And of course, Jana's age is just A. So this expression is equal to the age of Jana's older sister. This expression is the age of Jana's younger sister. And Jana is just A years old. Now, the problem said that the sum of their ages is equal to 26. So what we're going to do is take these three expressions, which represents the three ages of the three sisters, and add them together. But first, we have to simplify everything we have on the left-hand side of the equation we just created. Well, we have an A term here, an A term here, and an A term here. And all three of these A terms are positive. So we have 2a plus 1a plus another 1a, which is a total of 4a. And then we have a couple of constants in the problem. We have a positive 1 here and a minus 3 here. So if we were to combine those two together, that would be a total of negative 2. Because we have more minuses than pluses, the minuses went out. And we have two more minuses than we have pluses and that is going to be equal to 26. Now we just have one variable in our equation which will allow us to isolate that variable and solve. So the first thing we have to do is add 2 to this side so it cancels out with the minus 2 and balance our equation by adding 2 on the other side which gives us a total of 28. Now on this side we just have a 4a remaining and 4a means 4 times a. And what we do to get that a by itself, or so we can get just 1a remaining, is to divide that coefficient by itself. Because dividing anything by itself always equals 1. So on the left-hand side of our equation, that would leave us with just 1a. And remember, we have to do to the right side what we do to the left-hand side of our equation. So we have to take 28 and divide that by 4, which is 7. So now we know that Jana's age is equal to 7 years. Now because Jana's older sister is 1 year more than twice Jana's age, we could double 7 to get 14 and then add 1 to that, which would give us 15. So we know her older sister is 15 years old, and her younger sister is 3 years younger than Jana, so we could take 7 and subtract 3 from that, which would give us 4. And of course, we have figured out that Jana's age is 7. So if we add all three of these ages together, we should come up with a sum of 26. So let's just add those together to verify our results. 15 plus 7 is equal to 22, and 22 plus 4 is in fact 26. I hope these worked out examples of linear word problems were helpful. Please subscribe to my channel so you can become informed of any new tutorials as they become available.